I have a songwriting course where I show you how to write a song from scratch and this is that song fully written, fully recorded, fully produced and released. So today I want to show you a breakdown of this song, kind of what went into it from the writing stage to the production stage to kind of show you what's possible with even the simplest sort of song idea once it's fully fleshed out. So I'm going to share my screen with you, break down the different elements that went into this song and uh, I think this is going to help if you a little bit, you need some confidence with your songwriting to know that, you know, it's hard when you think this song isn't very good, this idea sounds boring, whatever. If it's properly fleshed out, uh, you can get to this stage. It's not too far away. So that's what we're going to kind of look at today. Let's get so this is our finished track here. We've got a uh, whole, whole ton of tracks. All the blue are drums. Uh, main drums, overheads, and then all the percussion parts. Orange is the bass. All these green ones are different guitars. Purples are the synth layers, and then vocals are in pink. So let's have a listen to this chorus and kind of see where we ended up here. The artist that sang this song that we wrote uh, is Megan Woods. So you can check out her on Spotify. I'll link all that. This song is available. Chuck it in your playlist. Uh, so the, here's the chorus. Here's what we got. So that's kind of where we ended up with the song, but I want to just take you back to where I ended the course with. Now, if you've done the course, you will have followed the journey and, and known what's the, where this song kind of came from. If you haven't, then I absolutely want to give you an opportunity to write this song from scratch for me. I think it even might be more helpful for you knowing the finished product and then going back and kind of reverse engineering the songwriting process. So I'm going to put a link below to the course is called From Singer to Songwriter. It's actually, it's very in-depth. Uh, 27 different videos there covering every single element and we wrote this song out of it. So you can definitely check that out below. Um, if you're not too sure about it, there is a free version as well, which is just a three-part video series. It kind of has all the concepts, but just not as as heavily fleshed out. But you can check that out from the links below. Let's. I'm going to take you back to the songwriting stage for a sec. This is the initial session that I did in the course. So what I simply did is came up with the melody first, which I play out on the piano every time. So this is that same chorus, ready? And then from there we added on the chords, uh, then we added this drum rhythm. And that's kind of how we fleshed out the whole song. So I like to really early figure out my structure. So it came up with that chorus melody first, then I wrote a verse off the back of that. Uh, so I like I liked to kind of put it out. So this is just simply verse, pre-chorus, chorus, verse, pre-chorus, chorus, turn, which is like an instrumental part, bridge, and then chorus. So once I had that structure, I had this section, I can copy and paste that three times, had the verse, I could copy and paste that a second time, you can see it's only half as long, the pre-chorus we could copy over, and then that bridge ended up being like a quiet chorus. Anyway, so that was kind of the songwriting that I went through in the course, kind of all those parts we just talked about, chords, rhythm, melody, lyrics, everything was in there. Got a guide vocal here, which I had muted because it's in a different key. So I wrote this in A, but when we got to, uh, once I pitched it to Megan, she liked it. We changed it to E to suit her female vocal. So it sounds bad, but we had lyrics in there that we kind of wrote in the course. So we kind of came from here and then we ended up at that huge production. So let me flick that back open again. So as you can see here, we've worked from the exact same structure. So this is still the same, uh, your chorus, that, that structure is really important. And then I can just, if I want to just loop that chorus, I can just loop the chorus, which is why I've kind of got that set out. So if you know anything about me, you know that I'm going to be all about the melody. So I'm going to, I wrote this whole song around the melody, chords, rhythm, lyrics, and then I've written the whole production around that melody as well. It's the most important part because it's the part that we're going to sing along with as the audience listen to this song, right? So the first thing I did was kind of teach Megan this melody and then kind of make it sound like it's good for her voice. I want to be real tonight. I want to be just like everyone else. We actually changed that line. Um, when, once the female was singing it, it didn't sound, it went low before. So it sounded better with her big voice to be able to belt that bit a bit louder, gave a song more energy. So we actually changed that in the recording stage. Um, we'd written it, pitched the song to her, rehearsed it, 
But then when we got to the studio, like actually it'd be better if it was like this. So we fixed up that bit. Uh, so with vocal production, let's just have a quick look at that. What I've done is got her to sing it really, really well three different times. And then we've mixed that one down the middle, one far left and one far right. So you've got three voices doing the same thing. It should sound like one voice. I want to be just like everyone else. The feel of my hands are tied. Which sounds magic. Then we've added two harmonies to this, two different harmony lines. Feel tonight. I want to be just like everyone else. The feel of my hands are tied. Interestingly, I didn't actually have time to write harmonies and do them with the session that we had to record the vocals in this. So what I did is just, I copied and pasted one of her melody lines and just pitch shifted it into a harmony line. So if you hear it by itself, it actually sounds pretty crook. Maybe it's time to let it out. Don't make me hurt to things I said I'd be. Doesn't sound great, but together with, um, uh, when the whole mix is in there, you can't really hear that it's, that it is just a copy and paste and pitch shift that she sounds like she sang it and she sang it really well. So I started with the melody next bit. We had the chords in, um, but I think a super important part is, is having the rhythm kind of really back the melody. So I went back and forth with a few different rhythms, uh, when I got into the production stage, but I ended up just going back to the one that I used for the songwriting, which I mean, makes sense, doesn't it? nice big rock drum kit but then the bit that really makes that come alive is percussion so this is the percussion on its own that i put in for this track which sounds so cool so i'll add the proper drums back in ready overheads close mics If I drop out the percussion, that just loses a ton of energy. So adds those little counter rhythms in there, which kind of really bring it out. Um, so often when like a mix sounds or like your song doesn't sound, oh, it doesn't sound like everything else on the radio. Often it's just those little elements that come in in production, but they don't need to be written in in the songwriting stage, which I think was is kind of what I wanted to show you this. There's a big difference between I've written a great song and now it's fully produced, but they don't have to come at the same time. So those little um, percussion elements are really cool. Uh, the bass line, let's have a quick look at that again alongside the melody. This one, I just wanted to have that really driving and pushing. So it's just doing like eighth notes. Using a pick, really getting stuck into that. So let's have a look at these guitar parts. So what I wanted to kind of make it sound like was we were kind of listening to pink, um, something a bit strong and powerful. So what I wanted to... I wanted to make it sound like there was big guitars without it sounding like a 90s rock song with big guitars. So I kind of wanted them to sound sort of synthy. So we'll have a listen to what I ended up coming up with. I'll just play this on their own. This is the main guitar part here. Tried to kind of put compression on it just so that it's, it doesn't sound, you can't hear the pick too much. It kind of just sounds like, nah, like a synth would sort of sound. and take out all the rhythm I could and just leave that up to the drums and the bass. Uh, but then adding these chords kind of made it, this is the part that you can hear the guitar with this. We got that big ring out, sounds like a guitar. And then to make it kind of poppy uh, and very 2023, these sort of muted guitar sounds. That gives it like a bunch of sort of feel and punch. So I've, I struggled a lot um, in producing this to kind of come up with a sound over the chorus that gave it a bit of movement, like because it was all very eighth and choppy. It didn't have a lot of um, feel to it, like nothing kind of really lifted and made it sound big and bold and different from the verses like I wanted to. So this riff 
uh, ended up kind of doing it for me. You can barely hear it in the mix, but it's quite loud, but it just kind of sinks into the background, but it did give it that kind of movement and just stopped it being so straight. So you can see that's like a low one. And then that's the same part higher. So together. And you can hear how they're spread a little bit as well, which kind of gives it a big uh, more reel. And then um, I have my mate Simon chuck a riff over the top of it just to give it that one more bit of life. So all the guitars together were like this. Which kind of make up the chorus. So again, when I was writing this song, none of that was in there and none of it needed to be in the songwriting stage. None of that, I didn't have to have all those riffs and the song was still completed and ready to take to a studio before I had all that. So it's just through production because I'm a producer, I could add that stuff in, pro in production. But let's just pretend like Megan brought this song to me in the writing stage where we finished it in the course. Megan comes to me with this song. Me as a producer can add all that stuff on. I can get my mate Simon to do guitar. I can get another drummer to do it. And any producer is going to be the same. So once you bring like a completed song, the producer can then fill it out is what I'm trying to say. You don't need to have everything sorted out before you go to a studio. You can still be a songwriter and write a great song like I had done here. So then let's keep going because this is interesting. Are you guys interested by this? I put a synth bass underneath to match the other bass because it was very dung, 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 dung. This one's more kind of pulsy and synthy. I'll show you. You hear how that pulses with the kick? So when the kick's not in there, it gets louder, but when it is, it ducks down. So that it was kind of gives it some movement. So it's not just like mm, solid sound. It's kind of the same thing those guitars were doing, just giving it a bit of movement there. So have a listen as it ducks in and out with the kick. So it's that we had a few different synth lines in there because it was sort of sort of sort of sort of because it was a synthy style song. So we had this I call it the power synth going in there as well with the bass. So that synth has that same side chain compression on it, which means it's it's not been triggered by itself. It's been triggered by another element. In this case, the kick drum. So it kind of rises up when the kick drum disappears. So they both sounded good. Um, there's also a piano in there, just bashing out those chords. Nice. So you notice all these white ones in here. That's where I had where they're muted. So. I was using different synths in the pre-chorus. I was using this, oh, and the verse, sorry, these verse, verse, verse synths. Again, you can hear how they're triggered off the, um, off the kick drum there. Uh, another thing that makes a mix sound super good is just having these little effects in there. So we've got this little guitar effect before the chorus, which just makes it, makes it sound like the guitar is plugging in and just about to go hard. So I'll show you that. Sounds stupid on its own, but if we put in like, let's put in a couple of these guitars so you can hear it. It's got a bit of leading, so it's not like a bang straight up. And we had quite a few of those. I do like using my effects. Uh, these risers, I call them. A reverse clap just to kind of bring in that next part. That's kind of all the elements of this song. So all together, they kind of work to sound like...
So I guess the other major thing about that you want to be thinking about in your production is just being able to put in those dynamics where the song kind of changes. So let's have a listen here from where this first chorus turns back into the second verse and you can hear how all the kind of production drops out and gives a different feel so that we've got room for the chorus to be big. The best way to do that is to make the verses small. So we talked about this a lot in the course Um, writing in those dynamics. You want to do it well with your melody and your chords and your basic song, but then your production is where you can really lean into those parts that you've written and and kind of make that stand out. So... See how we brought that right down, kind of giving it some room. It's still moving. It's still like asking a few questions with that sort of pumping sound. You're wanting to hear the next part. It's kind of building tension, but it has just really pulled back from the chorus. So as we hit this pre-chorus here, have a listen to the elements that we started to bring in to kind of start to build it up again and say we're going to the chorus. And I'll play it all the way through to the chorus. You can hear that. So yeah, quite a few things in there. Having that big gap, that big silence right before the chorus allowed everything to kind of dissipate so that chorus could smack really, really hard. But you could hear that we added the drums in, um, added that snare in here that wasn't previously there, um, some clicks and things. Uh, You can see the bass comes in on the pre-chorus, those soft guitar chords, uh, that little riff kind of came in. So we just start to build a few elements that kind of build tension and say something's something's coming. So we, yeah, we talked a lot about that in the course and that, that's the sort of stuff that you don't want to leave that to production. When I, when I get a song that doesn't have natural tension in a pre-chorus and I'm having to do all that with production, it's very, very difficult. And same with the verse. If, if the melody's in the same place, all those things we've talked about over and over, if they're not written into the song, it's really hard to add that in, in the production. So you don't want to leave it all up to production, but, um, production can definitely help definitely enhances what you've already got i guess is the best way to put it just looking through my phone i actually just found the original idea that i had back on the 1st of march 2023 so this would have been in the shower i'd imagine get out of the shower uh so this is the original idea that then has become a song right that i did in the course and then has become this song here don't know what the lyrics are don't want to be real tonight I want to be just like somebody else. Don't want to be real tonight. I just want to be like anyone else. Don't make me take a part Because I never want to. Hmm. A lot of similarities there that kind of made the final cut, the final release. I hope you found that interesting. If you don't know much about production, hopefully this was a little insight for you. If you have dabbled in production or you know a lot about it, I find it's always interesting to look at how other people go about it and you can kind of learn some things as well. Uh, You should definitely check out my songwriting course if you want to learn to go from singer to songwriter. To start with an idea and to be able to flesh that out and end up being able to release a song. And like I said, you don't have to do it all. You don't have to know how to do it all. But that writing part is super helpful if you do know how to do that. So I have the full From Singer to Songwriter course. I also have a three-day crash course if you just want to learn the basics of songwriting and take it from there yourself. Everything is linked below. You can check that out. There's a three-part series, which is just YouTube. Very, very simple. Uh, And then from there, the full songwriting course is 27 different modules unpacking in-depth melody, chords, rhythm, production, the whole, everything about songwriting. All the concepts are in that. So definitely check that out. Thank you for joining me today. If you want to watch me write a song in an hour, The other day I used this technique that I've just talked about and I wrote a song in 60 minutes from start to finish. It's not actually too bad. You can check that out. It's just up here.